All right, everybody. This is John with the Creature Teacher, and we are meeting Godzilla today. This is Godzilla, and he is a bearded dragon. Specifically, he is a central bearded dragon. Right now, he's sitting on top of Chewie's house. There's Chewie down there. Decided to dig a hole instead of using the house I gave him. That's all right. But the reason he's up here is because I just cleaned his house out. Now, this is Godzilla's enclosure. It is getting to the point where it's getting a tad too small for him. He's uh, still growing, and uh, I will be having to build him a new enclosure. Got a bunch of spare wood from doing a bunch of other projects and building stuff. So I'm building, building him one that's much longer and wider. For now, this will just have to do at the moment since we're all uh, social distancing and uh, staying away from little bits of viruses out there. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, this is pretty much what he has. Now, being that these are a desert reptile... Uh, sometimes people will use the sand substrate for them. Are you looking at the spider down there? Yes, you are. Yes, he sees them. You can see him moving. Yes, you're in, he's hungry. But since these are a desert reptile, uh, sometimes people will use the sand substrates for them. There's one that's also made out of like walnut shells. Uh, we don't do that. We just use newspaper. Um, and that's mainly just because it's uh, a lot easier to take it, change in and out. You just pull the old paper out get rid of it and put in new ones a lot of the free this is basically the free advertisements that come come in the mail every week or so and uh, also there it are there are uh, possible chances that uh, the desert sand media can cause gut impaction so if the animal ingests it uh, it can get lodged in their intestines their digestive tract and uh, cause them to get really sick and can even kill them so uh, now, some people have say that they've never ha ever had issues with that. Some people have reported that they have. So it's just we just we just don't do it. Uh, avoid the issue altogether. It obviously does not look natural. They do not live out in the wild on uh, ads for furniture. But since this is not the wild, this is an unnatural habitat. Uh, we try to make it as safe for them as possible. And he seems to be all right with it. It doesn't bother him whatsoever. He's got a nice big dish in the corner where he can drink from and soak in it. And then, of course, he's got his heat lamp there. Nice bit of wood that he can sit up and bask on. And then, of course, UVB. Make sure a lot of reptiles do require that not only they have a heat source that provides light and heat, but also a uh, light that provides natural sunlight for them, UVB. And depending on what reptile you want, you're going to want to make sure it's the right, right amount. Desert reptiles need a lot, need a lot more than a tropical... You know, rainforest reptiles do a lot more, a lot more sunlight. I'm gonna pick him up. He's a pretty friendly guy. Come here, buddy. Get his claws off the top of the cage there. Now, bearded dragons do get their name from. Look, the camera focus there. Jeez, camera, are you gonna focus? Man, from that area right there under his head. That's how they get their name. Is that beard? Now they kind of have a dragon-like appearance. They got those rows, rows of spiky scales on the sides of their body and then around their head. And uh, if you imagine some wings on his back, they kind of look like a dragon from How to Train Your Dragon. He has a passing resemblance to Toothless. Just imagine if he was all black with wings. Kind of looks similar. That beard part is uh, the very important for them, for both males and females. They both have beards. They will uh, use that as a defense. They'll kind of stick it out, puff it out, make their head look a lot larger. Hey, you're checking me out, aren't you? Make it look a lot larger and uh, try to intimidate or scare would-be predators. And then males do use them to, um, to uh, fight, off, fight off other males. When it comes time to uh, impress the ladies, they stick those beards out, and then they kind of do this uh, push-up, head-bobbing dance to uh, show off and see who's the best and who's the strongest. And uh, you have the biggest beard, and if you can do the most push-ups then you get the most girlfriends. And that's how they establish dominance and hierarchy within their social standing. Now, this is the largest species of bearded dragon. There's three species in Australia. The central bearded dragon is the largest. This is the one that's also the most common in the United States as a pet. They're very, very common in the, in the United States. And all bearded dragons sold in the pet trade are from the United States. You cannot get them from Australia. They have been a protected species since the 1970s. Australia basically did a uh, mass ban on the exportation of all of their native wildlife. My camera is having so much fun focusing on you right now. There we go. So, 
anytime you see a bearded dragon in a pet store, whether it's PetSmart or a Petco or like a small mom and pop pet store, or even like a reptile show, those are bred here. Now, their natural colors can vary quite a bit, and in captivity, there are a lot of color morphs of these animals. I've seen ones that are almost jet black through their whole body to bright orange and yellow. He kind of has some bright orange colors. They're a little hard to see under the, the lights that I got in here. A little difficult to see his, uh, his coloration come out. But he does have a lot of orange lines. Outside, he tends to darken up a bit, and all these patterns on his back really come out nicely. You can kind of see some of that patterning there. But uh, he's probably pretty hungry, so I'm going to put him down in his little house. And we're going to give him some food. There you go, buddy. You let go of my glove? Thank you. Now, being a reptile, a small one, he does love to eat uh, insects. However, they're an omnivore, so he will be getting a little bit of veggies today. But mainly, he loves to eat crickets, so we're going to be getting some crickets for him. And uh, I'm currently uh, running low on crickets at the moment. I'm going to need to give him some more water as well. Some more cricket, cricket gel. So uh, here we go. You see it on my hand there? There you go. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's very friendly. Doesn't not mind at all eating out of my hands. Now, even though they're, they're an omnivore, they should eat primarily, primarily insects. So you should give them some veggies, but not a ton. As they get larger, they can eat more. Uh, vegetable matter. I tend to just give them leafy greens. It's usually collard greens or turnip greens, something like that. I don't. Again, I don't feed any of my reptiles lettuce. They're all going to eat eat the uh, green veg green vegetables that carry lots and lots of nutrients in them. Here you go, buddy. You see it? There you go. Get it. Get, there you go. Sometimes he uh, misses. He occasionally will get my finger. He quickly realizes that's not what he's supposed to eat. And when it comes to uh, reptiles as pets, bearded dragons are one of the easier ones. However, uh, it's important to note that usually when they're sold, they are quite small and these animals can get pretty large. At their largest, they can be close to two feet. So just keep in mind that uh, if you get one, be prepared for the fact that not only can they live for a while, you know, fit around 15 years, is around their max life, from what I have uh, uh, seen and heard from some people in terms of them living that long. But also, it's just important to remember, like any animal, know exactly what you're going to do when you get it. Just because they are one of the easier ones doesn't mean that you should just skimp out and uh, not, you know, cheap out on what you get them. Just like with a dog and a cat, you'd want to get all the stuff to take care of them properly. With these guys, it's the same thing. Make sure you get the right stuff. Make sure you get them the right food. Here you go, buddy. Bam. It's a pretty healthy eater. I've never really had any problems with him. Not wanting to eat his food. All right. Well, we're gonna say we're gonna say bye to Godzilla. This has been John with the Creature Teacher. Feel free to like these videos, subscribe to the YouTube page. Of course, we're also on Instagram and Facebook. And uh, we'll be seeing you guys later. Say bye, Godzilla.